Welcome back. I'm talking to John Cardella from Ceridian Canada, and this is Let's Talk Leadership. And speaking of leadership, um, before the break, we were talking a little bit about, uh, we were starting to talk about making sure people knew what was going on and, uh, you know, setting goals and making sure the goals were aligned. Right. So talk to me a little bit about some of the steps that you take to make sure that the goals are clearly identified for the people in your organization and, and they're also aligned with the overall strategic direction of the organization. Sure. Well, well. First of all, uh, we take time to to understand the, the key priorities within our organization. So, so before we set the goals for for Canada, as an example, uh, we would start with our short range planning process, which would we, which would start uh, uh, next month in, uh, in well, it would be in the September time frame, and uh, and from there we would we would indicate the, the key priorities that uh, are hitting all of our respective uh, functions. Mm -hmm. uh, we would also do a, a market competitiveness in terms of understanding you know, where we're at and what we need to do. So, so we start to define the key components that we need to achieve in order to be successful. And then we take more time and we refine that. We, we will have some dialogue with our, with our corporate partners and, uh, and we will have established by, uh, I, I would think by the middle of December, uh, a clear sense of uh, the four or five key goals for organization. Now, how does the, how does your, when you, I, you use the word partners, and I just want to be clear on this, um, are those the people you're pro providing services to? Because I, I get the sense that you don't see your customers as customers, but more as partners. Is that a fair observation? Uh, yeah, that's a fair observation. We, you know, we are part of a global business uh, services company, and so, uh, there is a, a corporation with corporate officers, and Canada really reports into the corporation. So we want to ensure that we have an interlock there with them right. that that they've bought in into uh, into where we're going, what we want to do to accomplish our goals, and so continue where does, to make money. So where do the partners that you provide your services to fit into that part of the process? Because I, I understand that in fact some of your what would possibly be called customers actually outsource the entire process to your organization. Correct, uh, they do. I mean, we, as a business services company, uh, outsourcing is a key, uh, a key thing of what we do. And uh, it, you know, we, we, we aim to help our customers, uh, partners, because we do treat them as partners. We do have long-standing relationships with our, with our customers. And we look to save them uh, some very large costs over, over, over the, the term of those contracts. So it might be that uh, in cases where there's a customer that has a very large payroll department and they outsource their payroll department to us. So those people, in fact, become part of our corporation, part of our organization. They entrust us to then run their payroll, pay their people properly ensure that they maintain the credibility and we reduce cost on their behalf because this is, you know, that's what we do. Yeah, Our so core how do you bring them people. into that strategic planning process, those, those partners or customers? Excellent question, excellent question. We have, uh, we have customer advisory boards which we meet with on a regular basis and uh, so we will invite uh, um, over the course of one year uh, probably up to 15 uh, different uh, uh, customers. They're, uh, key uh, decision makers within those organization uh, to help us guide our, our goals for, for that year and for the short range and also for the longer term, ensuring that you know, we stay focused on delivering the kind of value that they're looking to see. Yeah, and what I find you know, important about that for people that are right. potentially watching is that there's not much point in developing your own um, strategic priorities in a vacuum if they're Correct. not really addressing the needs of your customers. So if Correct. you really want to be a customer focused organization, you really have to embed the customer into your planning process, get the input. They're just as important as the frontline workers are in terms of the planning process because they are the people you're, you're serving in the end. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so we do that, Bill. Uh, we get our goals all blessed and good to go. And once they're done, then we start sharing them with our people. And then at that point, it's typically the, the usual cascading process that, mm -hmm. we, that we follow. So our, our, our president will basically have uh, his four or five goals uh, that needs to be, uh, needs to be uh, accomplished. And then we all basically 
say, okay, how do we help uh, the president achieve those goals? And I have my goals out of that that, I, that I'll craft, and, uh, and then we craft uh, similar type goals for all our people. So by the time that the whole process is done, and it usually takes us on to March, um, most of our people will, will, will have a sense of what those goals are, and they will have had a dialogue, a conversation with their boss to understand what they need to do as well. So I want to spend a little time on that because I love what you just said, and, and I'm a huge believer on cascading down your goals. I, I find that too many organizations, number one, they get people, I'm going to call it the frontline people, they get so focused on tasks, they don't know why they're doing what they're doing. Right. And they don't see how their objectives tie it all to the organization as a whole. But the process that you just described is, is that the, the senior leader starts the process and Correct. it cascades down. I find so many organizations start at the bottom and right. it makes no sense, it's disjointed. So tell me a little bit, you know, for folks uh, who might see this as a little bit different way of doing things. So the boss starts and he writes his and he comes up with four or five objectives and you look at those and you right. look at the team that reports into you and say, what can we as a team do Correct. to contribute to those four or five key objectives? And you kind of Correct. put your hand up and say, this is what we're going to do. I do that. Our salesperson does that too. Our financial leader will do that too, the same as our operations leader. So we all basically do that. And there's got to be some joint accountability on some of those goals, doesn't there? Definitely. Definitely has to be joint accountability. And so right? now what you're talking about Because our bonus is, is right on it at the right. end. So right. So that mutual dependency is how you break the silos down in an organization. Yeah. I mean, at the end, uh, you know, we're all in together. Uh, we're there to basically, you know, accomplishing those goals means that, uh, that we're successful for the company, that we basically deliver to the, both the top line yeah. on the revenue side and on the bottom line, which is, uh, which is what we also need to do along with the, uh, some of the other key components that are also important to the organization. And, you know, you make that happen, and then typically, you know, that, that triggers perhaps uh, incentives for the mm -hmm. executive team. It triggers, uh, you know, merit pay for all your employees, and it triggers uh, the benefits and all the other components of compensation that we do have for our people. So, so I just want to follow through that thought. So the, the CEO or the president identifies their five. The next level, they say, here's what my team can help and contribute. Yeah, I can accept yeah. part of it or, or rework some of my boss's goals to make it right. more achievable. So everybody's in alignment. Then you Correct. turn to your team and say, folks, here's what I've committed on our behalf. Correct. How are we going to deliver against Correct. this? And then they start, and that cascades through the organization. Right. Right. So at the end of that, the frontline worker who has now said, these are my goals and objectives based on their supervisors, can look at that and say, when I do these, when I achieve my goals, I can see a direct line right to the top and say, that's how I'm helping this organization. I think that's absolutely fantastic in terms of building the engagement in the organization. That's what we try to do. Well, not it's always, easy. Not, you want a couple of not words always for it. Not so. always perfect, but that's the way it works. Yeah. Now, when yeah. You, when, once you've got, you, you start in through that process, how long does that take? You said it took take to go through the organization until about March to... Uh, yeah, we start typically in January. It, 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 it will take us into March, April. And, uh, and then before you know it, we're in uh, mid-year time frames. And so you've got to kind of like touch base again. We, we, we typically, what we do is we set the goals, we get agreement, do mid-year reviews, and then we close them off at the, at the end of the year and then start the whole process again. So right. that's so the So it's an it ongoing works. process. It's, it's an not ongoing, just a one-day, one, day, one no, year. No, it's an ongoing process for sure. And how do you track your goals over the course of the year? Is, 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 there, uh, is there sort of a monthly scorecard that's, that's produced? Or, I mean, and you don't have to give me the specific details, but just help me understand how another organization can sort of look at Ceridian and say, geez, they're doing that. That's something I might want to do as well. Yeah, there's uh, typically there's talent management software out there, and what that is is performance management software that uh, automates the whole process. Mm -hmm. And so as it automates, it also tracks completion. So you know what you have outstanding, you know what you still have to take care of, and, and you can get uh, easy measures for the entire organization in terms of where you stand. So how often would a typical person get that feedback from that process in terms of, you know, how am I doing? Would they get it only at the mid-year or is it more of an ongoing process? 
Well, at the mid-year, it would happen would be a little bit more formal, I would say. Uh, but typically, uh, most people would get that, uh, you know, informally through uh, other, other, other means, whether it's through recognition or whether it's informal sit-down with, uh, with the supervisor or other areas. Uh, we have, uh, you know, we're somewhat blessed in our organization. We do have some amazing uh, managers, and, uh, and our engagement stays high, but it's largely as a result of our, uh, our management teams. Um, uh, their engagement levels amongst the management team is also quite high, yeah. and, uh, and that helps to drive the tempo forward. Well, so I think that that Communications that is very important. Yeah, uh, that right. management level, what I call the middle level of the organization, I mean, the senior leadership can come up with all the brilliant ideas in the world, but if that middle team is yeah. not fully involved and fully engaged, it never makes it to the frontline workers. Well, it's funny, and I'll, I'll, I'll give credit to a, a good friend of mine, Ted Eman, who was a uh, um, senior consultant with, uh, with Hewitt. Um, he impressed upon our organization that uh, you can never have uh, your employees become more engaged than your actual management teams because it's your managers that really set the tempo and set, yeah. uh, set really the environment for your people. And... Uh, and I have to say, he's been right over the years, and so we've been fortunate. Um, I, in fact, I looked back before our meeting, and uh, our management level engagement with the senior managers was at, uh, was at 80, 83% for our company, which is terrific. And, uh, and so that's what drives that rhythm and tempo for, for yeah. our people. Yeah, absolutely critical. I mean, it just, yeah. so although it is driven by the top, I mean, that, that middle level, I will often say to when I talk to that, that group that you are the most important element in this organization because you take the vision of the senior executives and you actually bring it to life. Yeah, exactly. For an employee, you know, there's, there's three things that are very, very important to them, and it's everything. One is the company they work for. Is it, is it ethical? Is it... Is it does it have a good reputation? I feel pride in where Do I work. Do they feel pride yeah. in that company? Uh, two, it's their boss. It's their supervisor. And three, it's, uh, it's the actual work that they do. Yeah. But of those three components, you know, uh, it's my experience that uh, the supervisor plays possibly the biggest role. Yeah. More so than just the job itself or the company. Because when you think about it, if they're working for a so-so company, but they have a great boss that it gives them the latitude, gives Happens them the support, the, yeah. the recognition, they love it, right? Yeah. So, you know, they can put up with two out of three, but when the supervisor is not there or when the supervisor is not very good, they're gone, right? Yeah. Well, I'll wrap this segment up with just something that, that I'm a big believer in, I think you are, is that, you know, people don't leave the company, they leave the boss. And if the boss isn't right and isn't providing the kinds of things that, that they need as an organization, as an individual, then they'll look elsewhere. But you can get the other two wrong if you've got the right boss. Absolutely. And which is why we take, you know, great care in terms of management development with program that we, we developed on our own called uh, Management Essentials, so mm -hmm. we put all our managers through that. And this year, uh, again, through career progression and listening to what our people are looking for, uh, you know, we created a neat uh, new uh, initiative called Top Talent within our company. And again, it's, it was all driven by our employees. They applied. Uh, we got overwhelming response for 16 of these positions that we're going to develop into our, I guess, tomorrow's leaders, if you will. Um, and, uh, and again, the, the, the neat thing about that is that it's going to give these people the opportunity to work on real life projects. Mm -hmm. They work with people that they would not normally work with because it's cross functional. And, uh, our hope is that will be, uh, terrifically successful so that, because when you do this, when you do these things, other people look on to see what the company is doing. Yeah, absolutely. So we hope to set, uh, the bar very, very high in terms of uh, our management development and, and create leaders that, you know, keep, uh, you know, the great work environment, the great, uh, I think, approach that we have in our company going. Great. Well, we're going to take another break, John, and when Super. we come back, I'd like to talk a little bit about recognition strategies that you're using in the organization. Great. Sounds good.